Hello everyone, it's Fumba28 here and I am back with another video. Um, I know I've been recently doing, like I said, I was going to cover uh, other metagames primarily, but that's been a bit on hold for me at the moment. Um, I'm kind of too busy to start covering all the games that are occurring at the moment, but I do plan on covering some highlight matches as I did promise I would. Um, probably later on in the series as we're still on the earlier rounds, um, that's when usually the good games start happening, more on to like the semi-finals and finals, so we'll see then, but uh, my team is doing alright so far, um, go Hydreigons, yes. <laughs> but anyways, uh, today we're not talking about that, today we are talking about actually another other metagame, I'm doing an intro to insert other metagame. Uh, I know it's been a while I haven't done one of these type of videos and a lot of people have been requesting me to do them again so I decided why not and what a perfect way to get back into this by discussing one of uh, the other metagames that recently um, got put on the rotating ladder so for those who do not know um, the other metagame section on Pokemon Showdown now it has a rotational ladder uh, in a sense where there's like uh, there's a rotation between two other metagames so I think at the current moment it's between stat mods and now we're talking about ZU uh, or zero use but first to be camel mods but that got kind of got replaced so now ZU has a chance to shine and have its rotational ladder on the Pokemon showdown server and I know a lot of people wanted that so um, it's a time for to rejoice so I said decide why not uh, get people into the metagame by creating a video on this so anyways let's talk about ZU so what is ZU? ZU or Zero Use is an unofficial tier of the metagame in the making containing Pokemon beneath PU by usage. So it is basically like unlike other other metagames, um, it does not change any mechanics at all. There's no move changes or ability changes on Pokemon. It, it really is just another usage based tier below PU. So this is like the bottom bottom of the barrel type of threads you'll see down here. Um, and that's pretty much there is to it. There's not much explanation besides that. It uses the regular um, usage cutoffs compared to other metagame, um, other standard tiers. I think it's a 3.41%. I'm not too sure about quick rises and quick drop uh, drops. But uh, really that's it. It's just another usage tier below PU. And, and due to this, um, since there's like, um, since uh, key threats are like such unexplored and unused mons in um, other usage tiers, that's why I think Zio is kind of special because you get to like certain threats have a chance to shine compared to like in, even in PU, some threats wouldn't be usable because they are not viable there, but in Zio they have that chance to shine. And that's why I think it's a really special metagame and why a lot of people are attracted to it. Uh, and yeah, I just say it like it's a versatile metagame and it offers, it mainly revolves around wall breakers and sweepers, but does offer some defensive options as well, so it makes it quite versatile as a result. So like the other uh, standard tiers, ZU has its own ban list on top of the usage, um, the bans based on usage, so just to name them all quickly, there's Alone Radicate, there's Caracosta, Abominable, Executor, Jinx, Ludicolo, Marshana, Thrill, Turtonator, Gorbis, Type No, and Victory Bell. These Pokemon were ZU by usage at one point, but determined by the council, which paint hint I used to be on, but not am currently anymore. But anyways, they were decided, determined to be banned, uh, I think by council vote, due to ZU not having access to like suspect ladders and everything compared to standard tiers. Um, these were just voted by the council and were banned, likely so, because all the threats I had previously just mentioned were kind of just too OP for the metagame at the time. So uh, I'll just go through like a basic rundown of the strategy. Uh, basically, bulky offense is kind of like the king style of the format, um, where you'll generally see like one to two wall breakers coupled with some defensive pivots, some um, like full-on walls. It's just a blend of just wall breaking and having that defensive backbone at the same time. And this is mainly due because um, certain threats such as like Rowan Frost, uh, Silvelli Waller are not only so like very viable but very splashable as well and they provide that kind of both offensive and defensive momentum that enables like these uh, bulky offensive teams to kind of just flourish in the current metagame. And this is not to say that um, kind of radical um, playstyles such as Hyper Offense and Stall 
don't are like aren't viable they do exist and you know are usable but it, it for the most part for people who, especially for people who are trying to get into the metagame i would say that bulky offense is the right way to go at the current moment and this is mainly due to role compression being quite um prominent in the zeo metagame because there's such an abundance of um, threats that teams need to take care of, such as like Rock, Rotom Frost, Kadabra, um, Torterra, that it need to be covered. So having uh, threats that could kind of sort of try to blanket check, like obviously every team can't cover every single threat, but having um, team uh, team members that could cover the most threats as possible are quite valuable, and that's why you see certain mods like Torterra and Grand Pig and um, to volley water, I think I mentioned previously, as a result due to this real compression that's quite important. But like as I said, like uh, this doesn't mean that bulky offense is the only way to go. You could go your full-on offense, your def um, stall or balance as well. They're all viable and usable and that's why I think CU is also quite good because there's that access to that versatility in terms of playstyles. So right now I'm just going to go over some key threats in the current metagame just to give a brief overview on like what's important to check. So if people were to ask the best Pokemon in the current metagame in Zio, I would definitely go with Rotom Frost. Rotom Frost has always been a staple on bulky offensive teams and even offense due to the momentum it could provide with full switch and its great bolt beam coverage that it gets to stab on right due to its typing. Um, it could kind of just uh, flow through most walls thanks to with Blizzard, Thunderbolt and, and um, since its typing could provide, um, force a lot of switch-ins, it could provide momentum with its team with Volt Switch as a result. Um, probably its most prominent set either is its Choice Scarf or Choice Spec set um, that are quite valuable again as I said on the offensive teams. But also there's a set involving ICMZ um, which enables it to break down certain walls with the Z-Move and, and the combination of the Z-Move and Paint Split and Substitute or even with sometimes that set runs um, Will-O-Wisp to kind of break down the walls further. Um, so due to all the things I mentioned, Rotom Frost is just quite amazing in the current metagame. It's also its stats. It has well-rounded stats so it hits hard and it can take a few hits as a result. The only weaknesses I would say it really has is um, a weakness to Stealth Rocks, which means it can't pivot in as much as it wants to, plus the, uh, no access to reliable recovery, so it could get worn down rather quickly if it does not have entry hazard removal support, which it definitely requires. The next threat that I would definitely say that's right under Rolling Frost is Torterra. Torterra is both a great defensive mon and offensive threat. Um, it could set up Stealth Rocks reliably against most entry hazard removers in the metagame, thinking like Sil Valley, Water, and um, other Rapid Spin users. Um, its typing defensively is quite good, and it also hits quite hard. And it could also um, run offensive threat uh, sets involving either Rock Polish, Short Stance, or the combination of the both with the Z move, um, which is quite prevalent and, and quite good in the current metagame. And it's just a great. Pokemon, it's really splashable, it could be put on the majority of teams as a result. The only weaknesses I would say it, it has is that 4 times weakness to ice, which means like certain threats like the previously mentioned Rotom Frost, uh, on top of weaknesses to fire and flying, meaning other uh, common metagame threats can break it, break down, break through it quite easily, such as Combuskin and Chat Up as a result. And it's sometimes pressed for move slots. It does have a s slight, slight case of four move slot syndrome, as sometimes it would want to run dual s its dual stat moves. Um, but it can't because it's already running synthesis, stealth rock, toxic, all that stuff, or even its offensive sets that would want to run its dual stats and coverage at the same time, but unfortunately can't. So it could run into that, but it's not a major issue for it. Another thread I want to talk about, and then uh, I guess not like. I want to talk about Silvali Water, but I also want to talk about the Silvali slot in general. I, I like to make the comparison to Ubers as the Arceus slot is quite important there. And I would say the Silvali slot is like the Ubers equivalent for ZU. Um, Silvali Water is probably the most prominent uh, Silvali form that's used due to its great defensive typing, which means it could be act as like a reliable defog user and a defensive pivot with either parting shot and U or U-turn. And also um, due to its well-rounded stats, it could hit hard uh, offensively quite 
quite well even uninvested and it has access to great coverage with flamethrower ice beam and all that um which means it could hit uh threats quite hard like uh, an abundance of threats quite hard and the only weakness i would say Savali water really has is that access to no reliable recovery which means it gets worn down rather quickly especially considering that it's usually the team's main form of entry hazard removal so it's going to be switching into those uh, hazards um, and can get worn down rather quickly also due to status and stuff um, but Savali water is like the main um, form that's used but you could also have seen people starting to run Savali dragon um, Savali uh, what's the, the other one to run Savali Grass as well, even Savali Fighting. Those, there's a lot of Savali forms that can also be run, and they generally, generally are either used as entry hazard removers and pivots uh, with like the fog and parting shot, or it could also run uh, sword stance sets quite well. I haven't really seen Savali Water run sword stance, but I know like forms such as Savali Fighting and even Savali Bug run sword stance quite well. So yeah, that's just a general overview of the Savali slot, which is quite important. And it doesn't mean that every team needs to run a Savali form, but teams are usually better with a Savali form included on it. So here I'm just gonna list like other resources. I'll link it in the description box below. Below is you. Um, um, like not compared to other metagames has a lot of resources because people have been putting their time and effort into making it as big as it is now. Um, just gaining that ladder has is a big step in the right direction I find for it. But I'll link stuff like sample teams, viability rankings, they even have its own discord server which you could use to communicate with other with the council, the council is quite open. Um, for community feedback, the, there's a um, there's even a room, a private room on uh, Pokemon Showdown to get games there and communicate communicate with the community. And currently I'll also link, there's the summer seasonals. Unfortunately the signups are over, like it already started, but if you want to just see the matches there, see high level tournament matches of ZU, that, that's definitely a good place to start, especially for new players to see what's used and stuff and all that, and to get a general outlook of the metagame. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I know it's a quite a quick video and I do want to get back into like some tournament um, coverage games or even some showdown lines as I want to do that too. I like doing those too. So just leave comments down below of what you guys want to see. Um, if you want to see more intro to other minigame videos, I'm definitely down to do those as well. Um, but I just want to cover one of my favorite other metagames. Um, and due to it getting a lot, I think it was the right time to do a video on this. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed and see you next time.